Welcome everybody. Okay, so now let's continue with that question. And the objective um, for this video is to show that the function, the successor function, is one to one on the natural numbers. So then, then we don't we make sure that every natural number is built in a unique way, and yet there are no loops. Uh, by the way, I say this because the function um, a to a plus is not necessarily one to one in everywhere. At least with the actions we have so far. Um, it's gonna be one to one at the end, but um, we don't have the action so far. If we had a guy that's satisfied that it's e equal to the set that contains itself, we don't like that guy. We, we don't want uh, that guy. But um, so far, nothing rules it out. And as I was saying in class the other day, it's not that important if it exists or not, so we don't have to rule it out. Um, but uh, that guy will satisfy x plus equals. I let you guys work it out. Okay, let's go on. Um, so right, so to prove that this function is plus is uh, one to one the natural numbers, we are gonna introduce this notion of transitive set, which um, is not only for this proof. This notion is gonna be useful uh, when we do ordinals a lot. Um, it's a bit technical, but um, bear with me, uh, because it's going to help us a lot um, later in the class, and for this proof. So here it is. I said A is transitive if the following condition holds. Whenever you have that a number, an, a number, an element X belongs to A, to something that belongs to A, then X directly belongs to A. Okay? So this is saying that uh, belongs, the belongs relation is transitive. You guys remember what transitive means for like linear orderings or for ordering, partial orderings. It means A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is less than C. That's not necessarily true for belongs. Usually, in most of the cases, it's not true unless you have a transitive set. In the case of transitive set, if X belongs to A belongs to capital A, then X belongs to capital A directly. So these sets are going to be somewhat strange. Uh, but not too strange. If you have your number n that is equal to 0, all the numbers up to n minus 1, and you have that x belongs to a belongs to n, so this that means that a is a number. a can maybe 0, maybe it's, it's one of these guys. 0, 1, 2, one of them, right? And so that means a is the elements from 0 all the way up to a minus 1 and a is less than n uh, so that means that x is one of these guys so x belongs to this so x is a number below a right so we don't have less than or equal but this is just for the intuition so x is a number below a so x belongs to a um, so if you belong to a number that belongs to a number then you belong to that number yeah, um, that's how we define these numbers. So they satisfy this property of being transitive. By the way, so this thing uh, it can be stated in a few other ways, and it's sometimes algebraically easy to remember these things. Uh, these are all equivalent definitions. So union of A is a subset of A. Remember, something belongs to the union of A. Some X belongs to the union of A if it belongs to something that belongs to A. Right. So this X here belongs to the union. So, I will, so it's the same thing, saying uh, X belongs to the union of A, so it belongs to something that, so it's a member of a member of A, then it's a member of A. So this is what this is saying. So then this is saying that X belongs to A. So all the members of the members of A are members of A. Uh, the next one says exactly the same thing. If you have A in, uh, that belongs to A, then everything in A also is in capital A. Same thing. This guy is saying is that um, every so A itself is a subset. Here, notice this is a subset, not belongs to. This is saying that every mem everything that belongs to every little thing that belongs to here belongs to here. 
and all is a belonging to the power set, that's the same thing as saying that A is a subset of A. So this one here is just a restatement of this one there. Okay, so if that was too fast, pause the video and try to prove each of these things uh, one, one at a time. Um, I think that's a good exercise. Okay, so all of these four things are equivalent. So that's a transitive thing. And then you can prove that every natural number is uh, transitive. So I did a little picture before, but uh, this is a theorem. How do you prove it? Any ideas? Induction, that's right. Uh, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm practicing this video thing, uh, talking to the camera. Okay, so transitive. So how do you show something by induction? I don't know, let's call, let's, let's call it T for transitive. It's gonna be the set of all the n's in the natural numbers, such that uh, n is transitive. And then you have, to, you have the claim is that T is inductive. Okay, and uh, so how is that T is inductive? Well, uh, zero belongs to T, so the empty set belongs to T. Yes, the empty set belongs to T. Uh, we can see from here, I guess the union, the union of the empty set is equal to the empty set, which is included in the empty set. So we satisfy uh, that property right there. So yes, that's good. Now suppose uh, n belongs to omega. We want to show that n plus, oh sorry. Suppose that n belongs to t, also is transitive. We want to show that n plus is also transitive. Okay, so let's see why n plus is transitive. So suppose that we have an x that belongs to some, uh, let's say, a that belongs to n plus. So that means uh, n union n, so that's n plus, right? So then there are two cases. Uh, one is that uh, a belongs to the first thing, so a belongs to n, or the other one is that a equals n, right? So that's, those are essentially the two cases, depending on whether a is here or a is here. In the first case, we know that uh, n is transitive, Let's call, let's say, belongs to T. T is a transitive. Since N belongs to T, we know that if X belongs to A and A belongs to N, then X belongs to N. Uh, in this case, A is N and X belongs to A. So we also get X belongs to N. And then um, N, by definition of N plus, is just a subset of N plus. Right, because n plus is n union something. So therefore, x belongs to n plus. Okay, so one way or another, depending on whether you take your um, your a is here or here, you still get that x belongs to n. And if it belongs to n, it belongs to n plus. And if it belongs to n plus, that's what we need to be, to be transitive. We started assuming that x belongs to something that belongs to n plus, and then we ended up with saying that x belongs to n plus. Okay, so that is uh, the proof that uh, T is, trans is inductive, and if it's inductive by the induction principle, we know that T equals omega, and that's how we know that all numbers are transitive. Okay, so that's a standard induction principle. Again, slow it down and check the details. Okay, so um, omega is transitive. And that's uh, not that hard to see, um, because if you have that x belongs to a and belongs to omega, then uh, x is a natural number. And therefore x belongs to omega, right? Because um, uh, if you're a member of a natural, the natural number, the members of the natural numbers are the smallest, na the smaller natural numbers, so they are natural numbers themselves. If you're a member of a member of omega, you have to be a natural number too. 
Okay, so omega is transitive. So the natural numbers are not the only transitive things. Omega is beyond and is transitive. Um, and one property that the uh, transitive sets have is that if you take the union of a plus. Uh, why is this? Um, well, there are two inclusions you need to show. Uh, this inclusion and that inclusion. And so why are they? So for this inclusion, suppose that x belongs to a. Well, so for this inclusion, well, a is a subset of a plus. So therefore, the union of a is a subset of the union of a plus because there are more sets to union, right? So a plus is union everything in a and the whole thing a. Um, so that's how you get. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to say. A uh, little a is the union of a single set a. So remember the big union, you take all the elements inside and you union them together. If you have only one set, you just union it with itself, you get itself back. And this is a subset of um, the union of A plus, just because the singleton A is a subset of A plus by the definition of A plus. So A plus contains this guy, but contains more things, more things to union, but in particular it's union this guy. And that's how we get that, um, that A is a subset of the union of A plus. So that gives us uh, this direction. Uh, what about the other direction? Well, for the other direction, you have to just do it in steps. So take uh, X that belongs to the union of A plus. What does that mean? That means that, uh, that, that, means that two things. Either X belongs to something that belongs to A or X belongs to A, right? Because I'm just, A plus is uh, A union A. So the B could be either here or there. So those are the two possible ways of taking something from the union. Either you take it from a set in A or you take it from a set in here. Okay, so one way or another, A is transitive. We are assuming A is transitive. So here, so A is transitive. So we get that X belongs to A. So one way or another, X belongs to A. So we started taking something in the union and we end up that it belongs to A. So we get that the union of A is including A, the union of A plus. Okay, so that's the proof that the union of A plus um, is equal to A, if A is transitive. And that's it, that's, as a corollary we get that A, uh, the A plus function is transitive, because why is that? Well, because if A plus equals B plus, then union of A plus equals union of B plus, because they are the same thing. But then this one is A, and this one is B. So, A equals B. So, the function uh, A plus is not only transitive, it's not only 1 to 1 on omega, it's 1 to 1 on all transitive sets. Right? So, whenever we have a transitive set, we, it, essentially we have an inverse. If A, if a is, a, is a transitive set, we have an inverse operation which is apply the union, the, the big, the capital union, that gives us a, an inverse operation for the plus. So that's why it's one to one. No, if you have an inverse operation, uh, you are one to one. Um, cool. So that's so once we know that a plus is one to one omega, then yes, then that implies in our heads. I mean, not not in set, not inside the axioms that omega is infinite. We don't we don't know what infinite means yet. Like we haven't defined the word infinite inside set theory. Uh, that still has no meaning. So we only have a meaning from the outside of what something infinite should be. Uh, but okay, now we know. Now if you have a function that starts at zero and then iterates and never goes back, that's going to have to be infinite, um, whatever that means in set theory. 
So, so far, like if you, if you recall it, what I call the infinite axiom, infinite axiom, all it says is that there is an inductive set. It didn't say there is an infinite set because we don't know, know what infinite means. So, but we know what inductive sets, and now we know that the, one, the function this function has to be one to one. So, so that's gonna be that's the way we kind of uh, get into infinity through the inductive sets, um, and showing that this function is one to one. So now we're gonna use this omega to define infinite sets. Uh, so now that we have it well defined. Okay, see you guys next video.